Hello world, I'm Blue Dolphin with the Hoplite Security Channel. And today, I got a big one for you. We're gonna be jumping into the FOSS CTF attack and defense style competition. And I know some of you are wondering, why would Team Cyberspace be participating in attack and defense? <laughs> well, why don't I tell you? In fact, let me have Team Cyberspace tell you why. Team Cyberspace, what is your profession? Oh, oh, oh. Oh! Oh! Jumping right into things here. If you've never done an attack and attack and defense style CTF, let's take a look here. I'm just gonna show you what this is all about and talk a little about it. But I don't wanna say too much, so I'm obviously gonna be participating. But firstly, all you have to know, if you've never done an attack and defense style CTF before, is you want to get on their web page, come over here, look at the attack and defense for beginners. They have this fantastic little video that's going to walk you through. It's five minutes. It's going to give you some neat concepts, a general overview, and just explain what's going on. And really what's going to be happening is there's going to be a ton of other people on the same network, and you're going to have to be attacking people like it's the wild west it's not one-on-one -on -one. it's just 50 people or however many teams not people teams dropped in one environment and the chaos is going to begin so ideally you're going to have people defending your server and then other people going out and attacking okay let's look at the beginner's guide here so the game server reads that the game server is totally provided by the organizers of course and runs throughout the whole competition and it starts as soon as the network is open. Now, it periodically stores flags on your vulnerable box using functionality in the provided services. It then later retrieves those flags, again, using functionality. The game server does not run exploits. It simply uses the service as intended. Now, a big question here is why can't other teams then simply do what the game server does? One, that would take the fun out of it. Two, the game server has more information. Every service is either designed to allow the game server to store a specific token for each flag, or generates one and returns it to the game server. Now the game server uses this token to check periodically and make sure that the flag is there and it hasn't been stolen. So don't move your own flags or you might regret it. And whether the flag is stored using the token, uh, it determines your SLA, service level agreement. So you mustn't remove or break any legitimate functionalities. So be careful when you're hardening and defending your box. Some services can have a vulnerability that directly leaks the flag. What? Which will let you retrieve the flag easily. For others, it will require more effort. All right, let's talk about your personalized bomb box here. So the Vaughn box is going to be running an instance of the virtual machine image given by the organizers. It contains run all, all the services of the competition and it should be reachable at all times. So you can't take your server down and then, part, it, no, it's just, it's uh, you, you can't do that. So we already know the game server stores its flags and uses the communication with this machine to decide if your services are working or intended is not. And obviously the machine is accessible to everyone on the network and is the target for all exploits. A target for all the exploits from other teams. Yikes, that's gonna be aggressive. All right. So obviously protecting the flags on this machine is what determines your defense points. That's fantastic. So I guess we're gonna be getting defense points and offensive points. That's brilliant, I had no idea. Awesome. So you normally have one hour from getting the decryption password of the services until the network between teams is opened and everyone can attack each other. Use this time to decrypt the services and start analyzing what's running on your VM. It has happened that services with vulnerabilities that are easy to find have been exploited as soon as the competition starts. Oh, lovely. All right, for learning how to host a Vaughn box, click here. All right, let's talk about other teams. All the other registered teams are connected on the same VPN. They have IP addresses and they will run exploits from their own machine, but their VPN infrastructure will use NAT to obfuscate whether a packet came from the game server or another team. Ooh. 
Successfully stealing and submitting flags from the bomb box of other teams determines your attack score. If you have played Jeopardy CTFs before, you already know flag submission. All right, then they have a little hint down here. Wait a sec, it says, in this game, however, you'll have to run your exploits periodically as new flags get stored by the game server every few minutes. Ooh, interesting. It then says, so you probably want to script exploits and submit flags automatically, and you don't want to spend all your time manually exploiting everyone. Okay, that's good. It's lovely, I guess. And other than that, that's really just kind of a wrap here. I just wanted to cover the basics. They have a little information here on the webpage about scoring, technical behavior, social conduct, enforcement, so on and so forth. This is going to be a great competition. I'm really looking forward to it. And again, it's going to be running for just, it's how long is that? 10, nine hours. So it's a nine hour competition that we're going to be dealing with. And so far for registered teams, let's take a quick look here to see how many we got coming down the pipeline. We got 37 teams. So you got to imagine 37 teams of, I don't know how big the teams are, but say five people. That's a lot of chaos on a network. And yep, yeah, nine hours. Whew. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to it and uh, see everyone on the battlefield. This is Blue Dolphin with the Hawklight Security Channel featuring Team Cyberspace.